Linear differential equations can be solved by using the exponential of a matrix. So let me define what that is. If A is an m by m matrix with coefficients that could be either real or complex, the exponential of A is another m by m matrix denoted by exp A or sometimes just e to the A. And its definition is you take the usual definition of the exponential of a number, or at least one of its many equivalent definitions, and you just replace the number with a matrix. And it's not immediately obvious that this sum converges uh, if you look at each of the entries of the matrix. But this was one of the exercises uh, we had earlier. And not only does it converge, but the associated function given by putting in a parameter inside this matrix is infinitely differentiable. And its derivative, if you just replace a here with ta, then the derivative is just taking the term by term derivative of each of the uh, terms in the sum. You could use this uh, definition of the exponential of a matrix to actually solve any linear ODE. So again, if A is a matrix just as this one, then uh, the vector field given by taking X in RM, let's say, to AX so A here is an m by m matrix, and what this is telling me, it's, it's assigning to every point x a vector, and that vector is obtained by taking x itself and then applying the matrix A. So the vector field is integrable in our earlier definition, which just means that every initial condition has an integral curve that goes through that point for all time, and its derivative equals this vector field for all, for all time. So it's not only integrable and the solution to the initial value problem or the ODE x dot equals ax with initial condition let's say x of 0 equals some x naught is given by x of t equals e t a x naught for all t. So we actually get a solution from this. And you can, you can sort of guess um, why something like this would work. Let's just do a, a sketch of a, not a proof at all, but just a, just a small calculation, let's call it maybe. Um, if you take the derivative of both sides, the derivative of the exponential, well, treat it like an ordinary uh, exponential with a parameter inside, you're actually going to get a e to the ta x naught. And then this term here is exactly what we call x, so you get x. It sort of, uh, it sort of looks like a cheating calculation. And there's actually a lot of analysis behind this um, that's contained in these theorems. Is infinite, so not only is it infinitely differentiable, but its derivative um, is given by multiplication by a. So in practice, it's not very easy to calculate the exponential of a matrix because you're going to have to deal with infinite amount of terms. And it would be convenient if we had special cases or perhaps a general formula that's easy to implement to actually calculate the exponential of a matrix because otherwise this is just a, a useless solution. So there are three cases that we're going to consider and the easiest case you can almost guess if the matrix A is diagonalizable or rather if A is diagonal then the exponential of A and let's say that A is of the form lambda 1 up to lambda m 
and then 0 everywhere else, then the exponential of a is just e to the lambda 1 along the diagonal and 0 everywhere else. You can check this using the definition. What you'll get is you'll get each term has a non-zero contribution only if it's on the diagonal, or possibly non-zero. The lambdas could be zero, and the, the diagonal still gives you one. Notice that the off-diagonal terms do not change at all. They are still zero. So the medium case, which is the medium difficulty case, is A is diagonalizable. What this means is that, i.e., there exists an invertible matrix S and a diagonal matrix D such that A equals S D S inverse. Why is this a reasonably easy case to deal with? Well, first, Notice that the exponential of A equals the exponential of S D S inverse by this property. And if you look at the definition, if I take the exponential of an expression like this and just apply the definition, S D S inverse raised to the nth power will always look of, look, will always be of the form S D S inverse S D S inverse S D S inverse and the S and S inverse are always paired next to each other except at the very end. So you can easily show that this equals the exponential S times the exponential of D times S inverse. And we already know what the exponential of a diagonal matrix is. That's just one of the above form. So if we figured out what S was, then we could easily write a formula without calculating an infinite number of terms. We can just calculate a single matrix and then calculate these two matrices and then apply them in this fashion and do ordinary matrix multiplication to get the solution. So this is another relatively simple case to find a solution to a linear system. Um, and the most difficult case which is um, highly unlikely to occur. And when I say highly unlikely, what I mean is that if you look at the set of diagonalizable matrices, they're actually dense in the set of all matrices. And so having a situation like this is very, very rare. But it does occur. Um, and we'll, we'll have a few examples um, appearing. So in this case, A is arbitrary, is an arbitrary m by m matrix. And there's a theorem that's probably not so well known from linear algebra, but it should be. Uh, it's a very important theorem. It says even though you might not be able to diagonalize the matrix A, you can get very close. So there actually exists an invertible matrix S and a Jordan form and a Jordan matrix, let's call it a Jordan matrix J, such that A equals S J S inverse. So what's a Jordan matrix? A Jordan matrix is any matrix of the form J is a block sum of smaller pieces Let's call them Ji, and block sum just means you know you put J in one block and then you have zeros, J in another block, zeros, J in another block. So it's a matrix of this form where Ji is of the form lambda i, and all of these lambdas are the same, so it's some number, and on the off upper diagonal and nowhere else, zero everywhere else, zero, 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 you have ones. So it consists of the an eigenvalue, lambda i, and ones right above it. 
you might have lambda i appearing somewhere else, like maybe j, j subscript, I don't know, j, also consists of the same lambda i, let's say it was 3. Um, but in that case, um, we, we could have situations where are there, there are no ones and just um, that eigenvalue in that place. So it's always a matrix of this form where this is an ni by ni matrix. And this index set is finite. So it's easier to give an example of such a thing. So for example, a shear, maybe something that looks like 1, 1, 1, is an example of a Jordan form matrix. You can't diagonalize this matrix. It's actually already in Jordan form. Another example is the identity matrix. That's also in Jordan form. And the blocks in this case look like this. It's just 1 and 1. And with such a, such a decomposition of an arbitrary matrix, we can use the same trick here. And then everything boils down to calculating the exponential of a Jordan form matrix. And that's not too difficult, though there is a formula for how to calculate it. And that formula is an exercise in the notes.